Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will learn all about Azure Vices module. We'll talk about what are modules, how to provision the modules, how to access them, and why you as a developer should know about the modules. Let's begin our demonstration with modules. So here for this demonstration, I'm going to use the same repository which we are using in our previous demonstration. This repository is available on my GitHub account. A link is posted in the description you can find from there. So I have a startup file. So in this file, we have two bicep file, which is a main dot bicep file and a simple dot bicep file. So let's first of all, try to understand a module, a very simplistic way. Module with biceps is anything which we have in the single bicep file can be treated as a module. If you have anything in the bicep file, it could be a module. Okay. One single file could be of single module. For example, I have this sample bicep file in which I just have two variables and output. So I have a variable called first name, last name with some default values. Here I have my name and it's returning the result as a full name by combining the first name and last. This particular file, which has only three variables, can be treated as a module itself. I'll show you how. So this is my main.bicep file. Now in this bicep file, I do not have anything. So the way you treat this particular main.sample.bicep file as a module is with the help of module keyword. So when you type a module keyword into the file where you want to access the module or you want to call a bicep file as a module you use the keyword module and then after that you need to provide the name of the module for example i will call it as a full name module full name you can give any name and then you need to provide the name of the file so at the moment my sample dot bicep file and main dot bicep file are in the same directory so i can directly provide the file name as is but if you have the file into a different directory, you need to provide the directory path and then provide the name of the file. I'll show you in the moment in a second example about that. Next, you need to provide the curly braces to start and end. And then these are the four different properties we have with the modules. For any kind of module, these are the only four properties you could have. First is the name of the modules which you want to call so basically you can call it as an instance name of this particular module because it might possible this same module which is the sample dot bicep file you may want to call it multiple times so every time whatever you want to call it what is the name you want to give that's the instance name you want to call it so let's call it an instance name as a m1 for example and then let's go to the six, second property if you would like to set up a dependency or the explicit dependency with any other resource type to this particular module, you can use this property. Next is the parameter set. If you would like to set up the parameters, when you want to pass the parameters to the bicep file or to our module, then we need to use the parameter block. And then you need to specify the curly braces. And then by pressing the control space button, you can access the parameters which are which we we can overwrite it so as you can see that we just have two parameters first name and last name that's why we are getting the intelligence for those two parameter if i navigate back to the bicep file i just have two parameters and this is not a parameter this is the output variable okay so this cannot be this i can access this after creating the module but to overwrite the values, I can just overwrite these two values of the parameters. And that's the reason when I press control space, I'm getting the these two values. So I can provide any values. John and let's say last name, I'll call it Smith. OK, so these are the two values I can provide here. If I try to provide any other values, let's call it as a test. And then if I try to give random values, anything, then it, it is giving me error because this module configuration knows this, the reference 
PyCF file which we have referenced here in this module contains how many number of parameters and what those parameters types are. So if it is type of integer and if you are trying to pass the string value, it will again throw an error at the runtime or at the design time only. So that's really cool thing about the module. Next property we have is the scope. I'll show you an example about the scope. For now, just leave it. So now to test this, what we can do is we can create a new, we can create the, the RM template for this module. So I'll open the integrated terminal here. Let's first of all create the RM template for this by sample bicep file using the I'll run az bicep build dash f as for the file and then provide the file name that will create the RM template for the sample bicep file. Just open the bicep file. This is how the sample bicep file looks like. We have two parameters with the default values and then we have one output value which is you using these two parameters okay now let's create the sample arm template for the main dot bicep file I think we have got an error whenever you get an error you can see that the file name is indicated as as in red it means you are getting an error so we are missing a equal to sign here and now if i run again that should generate the arm template for the main dot bicep file and this is the bicep template arm template so with that we within this our module the module name is m1 which we have given and these are the parameters with the value so we are providing the value to our parameter and this is the inner nested template you can see the text here nested template with the inner scope and that's the schema or the template scope and the template itself has the values with uh, parameters with the default values but you can see the hint here provided a beautiful intelligence provided by the microsoft azure that this parameter will have the value as in john because we are providing the value as a john so it will not use the default value you can clearly see from this particular section similarly the last name will be overwritten and then we have the output parameters so now if i run it i will get the output as in full name now let's look at how do you refer the output attribute of any bicep module so let's say we have the full name as output written by the biceps sample biceps file so now in order to access this output attribute what i can do is i can access it in for example let's say full my name for example my name is the name of the variable and i would like to access the output of this module which is the full name and then i can say the full name so that's that's how it will return the uh va value of the full name in the output my name and then again you can refer this module itself as an module and you can call the nested module like this so now let's take an example to understand the last property which is scope so here uh, within the module folder i have my different modules so let's say i have a storage module and in this storage module i have the storage account and if i just open the storage account module or devices module here we do have certain number of different parameters properties available and which some of them has a default value and then after the parameters we are creating the storage accounts containers file shares queues depending upon the parameters you part and then we are returning the storage account id and the manager entity id so let's see how do we create this storage account to our environment with this uh, with this module for now i what i'll do is i will use the interpolation here so here we will say module and then i'll specify the module name is storage one storage account one we'll specify the path here so for the path i'll use the module section and then from here i'll go to the storage section and from the storage i will move to the storage account section and from the storage account we will specify the biceps file for the storage account so this is going to be our module path so as i mentioned previously 
you have to specify the clear full path of the modules and then you need to specify my storage account storage one let's say you we'll call it one that's the name of the storage account module instance and then we will specify the parameters let's see what are the different parameters available so these are the different parameters we can pass in so all of them seems to be default parameters we do not have any parameters which are basically mandatory to pass so most of them has the default value so i'm going to ignore this for now for the scope value i'll use res resource group resource groups and here whilst i'll say that it's existing quite property so name of the resource group so it's in the subscription and again we will follow here and if i will deploy again a new new resource group onto resource group number two and then storage account two i will say this is in number two okay so if you try to understand this carefully we are reading the resource group one and then while reading the resource group we are saying that this resource group present in the given logged in subscription we'll read the resource group name and that particular resource group will be used to deploy the storage account and that's where we have set this scope to this resource group it means that deploy the storage account to under this resource group and then secondly we'll have another resource group in the same resource um, in the same subscription we are calling it as an let's say rg2 and then it will read the second resource group and we are setting the scope of this storage account into a secondary scope uh, resource group and that's why the scope parameter is important in these cases wherein you would like to deploy multiple different different resources to uh, different resource groups or different subscription i would say and that is also possible okay this is all about the modules and this is how you create the module and access the modules in the biceps now this biceps or the startup.biceps file itself is a module and now though it's a different thing that we on we do not have any properties here or for this module but if i go ahead and let's say specify any new directory for example outside of the startup.cs file let's say here src for example and then i would like to call the main.biceps file so i can refer this module test and then i can call it azure biceps so let's check the status this is the startup and inside that what is the name of the module so again say test we don't have any parameters so i can deploy this module or the entire main.c file like this and again this module has again a subsequent modules like this which in turns has the modules like story account and this simple module it's all about the modules to start with it just go ahead and explore all the options to create the different bicep file with the different resources make sure when you create a bicep file with the resources you have the logical resources uh, tied together in a single bicep file don't mix and match all the different types of resources into a single bicep file and then create a single module that's going to be really complicated to maintain in future so it's always recommended that you create the module based on the logical segregation for example i have the module with the help of, with the different uh, logical segregation i have a compute section wherein i have compute related module integration we have the integration related modules monitoring network security and then storage as well so these are the different uh, section i divide when i create a module and then access those modules whether it is terraform or azure biceps doesn't matter but this is what the approach I define with the when I deal with the modules. I hope it helps you to understand the concept of modules. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.